show slash podcast, whatever you'd like to call us. I hope all is well with you guys. Uh, this is the second day of us doing the show, so hopefully all is going to go well. Um, yeah, today is Thursday, March 10th. It is. It really is. Believe it or not, we are three months into 2022. So, today's topics, Carson Wentz, Commanders, as you see, Seahawks, NBA, the Colts, uh, yeah, and we'll have a few other, we'll have NBA uh, yesterday, and we'll have NBA today. So, make sure you stick around and listen to all of this, because it's all good and relevant information. Just kidding. But, you know, we do what we do to have fun. Alright, let's start with the Commanders. Yesterday, a trade was made between the Colts and the Commanders. Uh, the Commanders received Carson Wentz, and I believe the Colts got two draft picks. Right? Right. Um, we're going to start with the Commanders. Uh, last starting chance for Carson Wentz. I don't think he has another shot in this league other than being a backup. Uh, drafted round one, pick two. Six foot five, big stature. And the only way he'll ever get to see a starting lineup again is going to be him actually performing well as a backup quarterback if he does not fulfill his role in Washington. I like the dude. I've rooted for the dude. Um... I do have down here that he is injury prone, so we'll see. Howdy, SNJ. Hope you're doing well today. Um, talking about a little bit of Carson Wentz here this morning. Um, he does get Antonio Gibson as a running back with the Commanders. Terry uh, McLaurin and Curtis Samuel as wide receivers as well. Can I name one NBA player? Yes, I can. Nick Collison. Was that one good enough? Okay. All right. All right. Uh, the Commanders' only backup players were Taylor Heineke and uh, Kyle Allen. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for chatting. Uh, Colts. Uh, S and J got my like uh head going in two different places here, so we're all good. Let's see what else I had down. For the commanders, this was a great trade. Um, no matter what, they update or they upgrade their uh quarterback room. I think it gives a good shot to show you what Ron Rivera is made out of. To me, Ron Rivera is not that guy. But I guess we'll see. Um, had Cam Newton several times now. Cam Newton, you see where he is. Is Carson Wentz on that same path? He could be. Not 100% sure. I don't have all the trust in Ron Rivera, and I think Ron Rivera is getting to his last chance of being a head coach with the NFL slash definitely with Washington. I think Washington's about ready to cut him if he does not have anywhere near successful season. Um. The rankings I do have for the Commanders next year in their own conferences, I have Cowboys 1, I have the Commanders sitting at 2, the Eagles at 3, the Giants at 4. That is very well subject to change. We haven't hit free agency. We haven't hit draft. Eagles, um, Jalen Hurts. This is going to be interesting because you've probably heard that they're going to be playing each other twice. You already know that. So the Commanders and Eagles gives Jalen Hurts a good time. To show what he's doing. Thank you for the follow, SNJ. Dang, my alerts are like way off here. <laughs> All right. But yeah, thank you for the follow, SNJ. But that would be it for the commanders. I, I They won the trade. Let's move on to the Colts now. Um, Colts had a winning record with Carson Wentz, 9 and 8. I know that's not. Going to get you very far, but it was a winning record. Wentz, 27 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, 3,500 passing yards. Up 
from when he played with the Colts. He was 16 and 15, 16 touchdowns, 15 interceptions with 2,000 yards. So he definitely had a very in a, uh, imp- uh, improved season over 2020. Uh, what do the Colts do now? It, it was a bad trade. Their backup is Sam Ellinger. Ellinger, Ellinger, I don't know how to say that. I know he is, was a rookie last season. Uh, what, was he the Oklahoma quarterback, I believe? Um, what do you do if you're the Colts? You pick up a free agent. I've heard Kirk Cousins may be hitting the market. We know Baker may, uh... Some people have Mitch Trubisky going there. I would like to see him go to the Seahawks personally, but we'll get to that here soon. So I don't know what you do if you're the Colts with the quarterback situation. You went from Phillip Rivers, winning season. You went to Carson Wentz, winning season. I've heard a lot of the reason of letting him go was the Jacksonville game. It could have been, but, but, that's all I got, to be honest with you. I, I don't understand why the Colts would have done this. I would have gave Carson Wentz one more season. He wasn't 95 like Phillip Rivers was. <laughs> um, The team players are not happy on the Colts about this trade. What? Six starting quarterbacks in five years and five um regular starting quarterbacks <laughs> in five years. And I can't even name you all. I guarantee Andrew Luck's probably one of the first ones. We know Philip Rivers. We know Carson Wentz. And I can't name you in betweens. Um, never really paid that much attention to the Colts after Peyton Manning. Maybe Peyton Manning. Nah, Peyton Manning's not on that. He would have been Denver. I have no idea. But, 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 but. Yeah, team players are not happy. I don't blame them. They want to do something with the Colts. They're having a winning season. They have two winning seasons in a row with two different quarterbacks. You move off of it, and now what? You go to the rookie Sam Ellinger. You you haven't heard anything kind of like Trey Lance. You've seen Trey Lance. You've never even seen Sam Ellinger on an NFL field. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm sorry if I'm not. Let's go on to the Seahawks now. I talked yesterday. I know my podcast didn't even shit or save yesterday. Shave. Something I need to do. My podcast didn't even shit save yesterday. That was nice. But we did talk about um Seahawks lost that. Actually, let's go back up to the Colts. Let me get one thing out here. I have the rankings for the Colts now. Titans won in their conference. And then I don't have a two or a three. I put the Colts, the Jags, and the Texans all at number four. I'm not gonna see them do anything next season. Um <laughs> what? Maybe the Colts get a quarterback and then we kind of change things up here a little bit. I didn't write down their whole entire team, but you know that they have Michael Pittman. They have Jonathan Taylor. So they do have good uh, roles filled in. I'm not sure who their tight end is off my head, but. Also for the commanders, you have Logan Thomas as a tight end. He's an up and coming star, I believe, but we'll have to see. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, Titans, and I don't know who takes it between the Colts, Jags, and Texans for the second and third spot. Texans, they get rid of Deshaun or they don't play him another season. They're going to be down at the bottom. Jags, they keep... I don't even know what the Jags are doing. I don't. Uh, We've heard uh, Trevor Lawrence's name being thrown out in the trade. I, I have no idea. Do you not stick with Trevor Lawrence? Do you not think what he was? I don't know. I had hope in Trevor Lawrence because I cheered for Clemson, but but <laughs> I didn't think he was going to go undefeated like a lot of people did. And it was the Jaguars. And it was Urban Meyer. I'm a Michigan fan. I'm a Michigan football fan. 100% cheer for them all over Ohio State. Urban Meyer is not a good NFL coach. Same, same for my Pete Carroll, too. But, um, but the backup quarterbacks for the Seahawks, real quick. Geno Smith, Jacob Eason, um... There's been heavy talk about Deshaun Watson headed to the Seahawks. I don't I don't believe that's going to happen. I really don't. Well, I'm not going to just put really on there. I don't think it's going to happen. It could. 
I hope we see Deshaun Watson return on the football field. We're not exactly all sure of what happened on the football field or off the football field with him and all the 20,000 masseuses. I don't understand why somebody needs 20,000 masseuses, but that's him living his life. I guess. I have no clue. Um, Seahawks, free agents. We have my, Mitch Trubisky. Again, you're going to hear me refer back to Mitch Trubisky because I don't think he got a fair shot in Chicago with Matt Nagy. Um, Jimmy G is going to be tradable. Kyler Murray is going to be tradable. Kyler wants to get a deal done before the N- or the NFL tr- NFL draft. I was going to say the NBA draft. Not quite there yet. Um, I don't know. I really don't know. And I don't think the Cardinals are going to trade Kyler to the Seahawks or let Kyler go go to the Seahawks. That would be a bad career move for them. But. It's all up to them. I don't know. And remember, the Steelers and multiple other teams, like the Browns, are also looking for quarterbacks. Browns will say they're going to keep Baker, but they'll also say that they aren't keeping Baker. So, I'm going to go to the Seahawks real quick again with the rankings for conference next year. I got the Rams, Matt Stafford, Odell, Cooper Cup. You want me to keep going with this list? No? Okay. (laughs) <laughs> they're number one number two i have the cardinals they keep uh they keep kyler i believe they're strong number two in the conference with d hop jj watt a few of the other ones i forget who they just released yesterday off defense i didn't like that as much but we'll see uh 49ers they go with trey lance they are going to be third in that conference i they go with jimmy g i'll put them up to two I think Jimmy G is better than Kyler Murray at the moment. I think Kyler Murray has the potential to be better, but. Yeah, I have a 49ers bottoming out at three, and I have a Seahawks at four. Because Geno Smith and Jacob Eason are just not going to get the job done for you. If you had Russell, I would move him up one. I don't think I I, I don't think I'd move the Seahawks up two. I think that would be a extremely hard. Um, choice to make, and I don't think I would do that. And we didn't do this yesterday. I'm not going to really touch on the Broncos today at all. I do want to put their rankings out there. You can also probably find these on Instagram if I get something up about it, hopefully. Uh, I have the Chiefs at one. I have the Broncos moving up to two with the Russell Wilson trade. I have Chargers at three. And don't get me with that Derek Carr stuff at number four with the Raiders. Yeah, Derek Carr is not going to be a number three quarterback and move his team up that high. I'm sorry, but he's just not. Other big NFL news yesterday, Alejandro Villanueva retired. uh, Six years at Steelers, one year at Ravens. He had, I think he had a good career. Don't get me wrong. He was a penalty monster, though. He picked those up like crazy. Monster on the field, a penalty monster on the field. Uh, Army service, thank you for your service, Alejandro. Um, I hope you have a great retirement. I don't know. I don't know, Chad. Will he be back? He might be. I don't know. He could go to the. He could go back to the Steelers and retire for a day. I don't think he wants to play for the Steelers ever again. But I think he might retire Steelers if he was to choose to do that. But very good career overall. Just really high penalties. Unfortunately. All right, we are going to move on to the NBA. And this is going to be my favorite topic of today because I got a lot of these right. I almost got all of them right, actually. The ones I didn't get right, I was a little shocked by. I want to talk about DeMontis Sabonis first. Um, He was just traded from the Pacers to the Kings. Um, suspended one game for contact with the official. As you saw uh, in the Knicks game, he got a little testy with the official, kind of rushing him a little bit, then backing off. I don't disagree with the suspension. Sorry, DeMontis, you're a star, but you know better. Um, He looked frustrated, and he was frustrated. We know he was frustrated, but I feel like DeMontis Sabonis is frustrated with being at the Kings. Hear me out on this chat. 
I think he was getting frustrated with the Pacers that weren't going anywhere. I'm sorry if you're a Pacers fan, but you're better off with Trey Halberton. I like you were better off with Paul George too, but unfortunately he got a really freak injury. Um But I don't think DeMontis Sabonis wanted to go to the King because the Kings are not going anywhere. If I were him, I would be extremely frustrated. I would have to hold in my anger a little bit. Um, you're really angry on the field, off the field. Sorry. Uh, or on the court, off the court. I think you're going to see DeMontis Sabonis ask for a trade. And to a successful contender. Because he deserves it. He's an all-star. Not one of the top 75, but he is an all-star. And I have a feeling he could make it to the top 100 if he was the of his play. I don't know if you guys knew this or not, but DeMontis Sabonis is one of the... <laughs> I would say one of the best forwards in the game. Centers. Forward centers. Um, At Indiana, he wasn't noticed as a lot. At the Kings, he definitely won't be noticed. Um, Again, he'll probably be noticed because I'm going to be calling him out because we go game by game here. But other than that, the Kings aren't going to be making any other if they lose to the Lakers or the Clippers or the Nets, the 76ers, but yeah, so I think you're going to see a, um, a lot of frustration coming from the Demotis, the bonus side. I'm expecting it, but it's not really going to be out of left field. I mean, Heat could trade for him. <laughs> we'll get to the Heat year in a second too, Chet. And there's a reason why I say that, because what, Demona Sabonis is 6 foot 11? But here, let's start with the NBA yesterday. We have the Bulls winning over the Pistons, 114 to 108. Not by a big margin, but I had that. But what did I say, chat? I said DeMar needs to score about 30, mid-30. 30, 36 points out of DeMar. Thank you. That's all I needed. That's all I needed yesterday. I, I can even look back on my list here and says Bulls, DeMar's scoring. Awesome. Got that down. Uh, Pistons. Concerned players. Jeremy Grant. Jeremy Grant was looking like a promising star at one time. Yesterday, he was looking like a 32-minute, three-round rebound, two assists, and uh, 12 points. Don't care about the assists. He's a big guy. I do care about the three rebounds and the 12 points. Please. Work on that, Jeremy. I know you're playing with the Pistons. I feel I know there's no hope there, but come on. I mean, I, I don't know what to say there. I, Jeremy needs to, I don't know, perform better, but you're playing with the Pistons, so do you have any hope? I have no idea. Uh, Celtics win over the Hornets by 14. I said Tatum's going to have another big game. He had 41 points. I'm going to give a... Uh, I'm going to give a shout out to uh, Al Horford, Al Horford and Robert Williams for their double doubles. And Al Horford is proving that he still has it. What team benched him last year? The OKC benched him because he was too old. Yeah, well, he's putting up double doubles this season with the Celtics, making him more dangerous. And what did I say the Hornets downfall was yesterday? Did I put it? I did not put uh, Hornets yesterday. I kind of did everything a little different today, so it kind of explains everything out a little bit better for you guys. Um, I put Hornets, the most disappointing player again. I have PJ Washington, six foot eight. I may have gotten his size wrong yesterday, so I'm sorry if I did. I think I said he was six ten. Forty two minutes, four rebounds, one assist, seventeen points. Scratch out the assist. I don't care. Seventeen points. All right, you played 42 minutes. You only scavenged up four rebounds, and you were supposed to be one of the next big things. No. Again, I called him out yesterday. Um, Where was that? Hornets, 37 minutes, eight rebounds, four points. A, so he put up the points, but he lost the rebounds. Amazing. And I think he should have rebounded more against the uh, Nets anyways, but it's whatever. Uh, Suns win against the Heat, 111 to 90. I consider that a blowout. 
you have Aiton with 10 rebounds, 19 points. Kind of what I meant when I said who's going to out-rebound who. And I'm going to get to why I'm going to say that again. But Aiton with 10 rebounds, I think he's going to rebounded more. He should have rebounded more. Um, you have Payne coming in with the second day of a double-double. Uh, Booker had... I think he had like 16 points. I don't think he got a double-double that game. And JaVale McGee with a double-double. Congrats to him. But I do think Booker did pick up the points a little bit, if I remember right. I think I put that down. Of yeah. Now, let's get to the heat. Adebayo only played 30 minutes yesterday and had six rebounds. This is the problem that I'm talking about here, chat is that we are going to see the Heat, and the Heat that I love. I like the Suns. I love the Heat. Um, They're going back in to the playoffs with Bam Adebayo at the starter position at a height of six foot eight. Now, we just talked about P.J. Washington. He was supposed to be big. Uh, Bam Adebayo has proven himself to be big. Six rebounds in 30 minutes. I'm not going to get into the other stats because they don't matter to me as much. I think he had good points, uh, but only six rebounds out of the center for the Heat. You've got to be picking up more rebounds like, than that against the Suns if you expect to win. You have the Bucks, You have the Celtics. Tall people on their teams. Please. Please. Another concern I had for the Heat... I did notice that Kyle Lowry, uh, 32 minutes, 5 points. I'm not exactly sure what was going on there, why he didn't have more points than that, but I'm not too concerned about that because he'll fix that. Adebayo, though, you've been a constant shower of going back and forth and back and forth on these rebounds. I need you to be constant with the rebounds. Jazz went against Blazers. What did I say? 123 to 85. Big blowout there. Bogdanovich with uh, 26 points. O'Neal with a double double. Mitchell with 16 points. Gobert with 10 rebounds. I'm not exactly sure who to give the uh, player of the game to there. And neither was uh, Google last night. I don't know if you saw that. You looked up the stuff and a lot. Nobody was the player of the game on either side. Um, the most disappointing thing for the Blazers was the whole team. I said it. And it's not going to be the first time I say that today. The whole team is embarrassing. Granted, they had no and for nine Sim Simons yesterday. And again, I put that on there was uh, we needed to have Anfrey Simons score or Donovan Mitchell score. And Anfrey Simons wasn't there, and Donovan Mitchell only scored 16 points again. So I don't know what you do there, chat. I really don't. Highly disappointed with um, Mitchell only scoring 16. You're playing the Blazers, dude. Gobert, only 10 rebounds. I think he had 9 points. I need to start writing down the stat, like the rebound stats completely here. I, I don't know what to tell you. Mitchell, Gobert. I, the Jazz won by big. I don't know how. I really don't. I would say that was one of the most disappointing performances, but they won by big, so we'll leave it there. They won. <laughs> Bucks win against the Hawks, 124 to 115. Who did I say? I said Giannis and Portis. Uh, Giannis had 43 points, 12 rebounds. Portis had 23 points, 15 rebounds. Thank you so much. I'll take that one home with me. So, so far, I've been right about the Bulls, Celtics, Suns, Jazz, and the Bucks. I've been kind of sort of right about who all to watch with DeMar, Tatum, Aiton. I didn't have anybody in the Jazz game other than Mitchell and Anthony Simmons, and neither one of them showed up. So Jazz won, and that's the only thing I can say. But I guess Giannis and Portis right on the spot. Thank you so much. I'll take my money home with that. Thank you. Jesus Christ. Um, Bogdanovich of the Hawks. 31 minutes, 6 rebounds, 4 assists, 9 points. I need something out of you. I don't know what you're going to give me, but I need something if you're going to play 31 minutes. Um, for the player of the game with uh, Hawks, I would give Trey Young 27 points, 11 assists. I'm not going to diss on him. Good game out of him. A lot of people were probably like, Trey Young could have scored 10 times more. They would have won the game. Probably. But you're going against Portis and Giannis and a few other big guys. 
Timberwolves win against the Thunder. What did I say? I chose that one as well. Uh, Cats double-double. Malik Beasley, Beasley with 38 points, 11 of those being threes. Or, what, 33 points out of 38 points being threes. <laughs> uh, D'Angelo Russell with 12 assists. I'm not exactly sure who to give the uh, player of the game to there. They won 132 to 102. I guess we give it to Carl Anthony Down. I don't know who we give this to for the player of the game in that one either. Malik Beasley? I don't know. You guys decide. I don't I don't remember who uh Google had up there, but I have no idea. But Thunder. <laughs> who do you want me to start with here? Most disappointing player to me was Shy Gilgis Alexander. I just hyped him up on yesterday's show. I'm going to continue hyping him up. I didn't even put his stats down. What was he doing yesterday? Is he just tired out? Does he not want to play anymore? If he doesn't, we completely understand why. It's a losing franchise. I was going to put the whole team look like garbage, including Shy Gilgis Alexander. Um, which I don't think is true because I think a few of them did actually have a few good games. Sorry, Chad, I just had to check my phone real quick. Lindy Waters. I don't know who this is. 28 minutes, 4 rebounds, 3 assists, 8 points. No clue. Give me better stats, please. If you're going to play 28 minutes, make make yourself a name. Tell me who you are. I don't know. I couldn't choose who was the most disappointing player other than Chad Gilgis Alexander. We'll leave it there. I don't know who Lindy Waters is. Needs to make a bigger name, so we know. Magic win versus Pelicans, 108 to 102. And I'm gonna jump back to the Blazers game real quick. I'm sorry. Um, Blazers lost to the Bu- or Jazz, 123 to 85. Uh, the first quarter, the Blazers only scored 15 points. Um, the second quarter, they only scored 14 points. Please, that's 29 points. That the Jazz put up almost all four quarters. Blazers are a sad, sad team. All-Star game. What did they say? Two worst teams in the NFL, right? Nobody wants to play in that. Nobody wants to get injured. Nobody wants to play in the All-Star game with the NBA and get injured. Why don't you have the Blazers versus Thunder? The two saddest teams. Jesus Christ. Okay, back to the Magic versus Pelicans. I have the Pelicans, uh... I I have literally wrote down, um, Pelicans, question mark. What are you doing? What are you doing if you're the Pelicans right now? You don't know whether or not, um, Zion's coming back. And I'm sorry, I'm missing the Magic here real quick, but just hear me out. You don't know what's going on with Zion. CJ McCollum gave you 30-some points. Jonas Valanciunas showed up, gave you 15 rebounds, 30 points. And here's the most disappointing player of this game. And I am angry. I am, I'm outraged. Tony Snell, who we've seen on other teams before, and I don't think he's that good. 31 minutes, one rebound, zero assists, zero points. Release him today. Release Tony Snell, please. Just release him. He lost by six points, and he gave you one rebound in 31 minutes. I could give you half the roster that did better than that for less time. The Magic, sorry. We're getting into the Magic now. I don't know if we'll touch back on the Pelicans. The Pelicans pissed me off. Wendell Carter, I would say, was player of the game. Eight rebounds, five assists, 13 points. Again, not grand stats, but whatever. Franz Wagner coming up with that second. I believe I put Franz yesterday as a problem player. Did I not? I did. 28 minutes, one rebound, two assists, six points against the Suns. Well, guess what? He did better against the Pelicans. So, voila. There's always that, right? Right, right? Tony Snell, I just got to have you do something. Or I got to have the... If I'm the Pelicans, I'm seriously sitting back today and I'm going, well, it may be time to release him. Peace. Like, good luck. 
Uh, that is the one of the most irritating stats I've ever seen in my life. What, Dennis Rodman didn't have points, but he put up rebounds? All right. Nuggets went against Kings, 106 to 100. Okay, let me go back real quick. I did not have the Magic being the Pelicans, so. Nuggets went against Kings. I did have this one. You're going to have Jokic with 18 rebounds, 38 points, 7 assists. Going for that MVP, like I told you. He almost had that triple-double like I did predict. Almost. It doesn't count, I know. Problems with the Nuggets. Aaron Gordon, 34 minutes, 5 rebounds, 11 points. You're Aaron freaking Gordon. You can do more. I believe in you. Show me more, please. You won by you won to the Kings for 6 points. And we literally just said that the Kings are crap. So, <laughs> um, Austin Rivers. Doc Rivers' son. 32 minutes, 3 assists, 6 points. For 32 minutes. Come on. Come on. Do I really have to go and look up better point guards for you to, you know, sign other than Austin Rivers if he's not going to put up? Jesus Christ. But, yeah, that was Jokic's game. Nice triple, or, or nice double-double, almost a triple-double by him. Um, Really pushing for that MVP with winning. Uh, Kings problems at the moment. I have Justin Holiday, 31 minutes, 2 rebounds, 2 assists, 8 points. I need more points. I need more assists. I have Justin Holiday. Uh, Damian Jones is six foot eleven, thirty seven minutes, seven rebounds, two assists, eight points. Give me a few more rebounds, please. You played thirty seven minutes. De'Aaron Fox, I would have to say, played all right for the uh, Kings. He gave it his all, thirty two points, ten assists, five rebounds. Good job to him. He had a double double on the night for him. De'Aaron Fox is going to be another one requesting a trade out too. Because De'Aaron Fox has it in him. He just does. Now, the game that everybody's been waiting for. Rockets win against the Lakers. I'm going to start with the Rockets first. I didn't have the Rockets winning against the Lakers. Um, Who did I even say with the Lakers here? I said LeBron's big game. Melo shows up. Oh, and I did put for the Pelicans, CJ McCollum points. But let's go back to the Lakers here. L- Lakers. LeBron's a big game. Melo shows up. Okay. Just remember that because I was completely wrong. All had double doubles. Kevin Porter, Al Preen Sagan, their center, and Kenyon Martin Jr. Kevin Porter Jr., Kenyon P- Martin Jr., and Al Pon Sagan all had double doubles for the Rockets. Good job to them. I gave them all players a game. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know how else you do it. Maybe you give all the players to the Rockets a uh, good game. You're young. You played harder than the Thunder and the Blazers, so I don't know what else to say. Um, mind you that this game went in overtime. I would have not put that on the bet either. If you guys want me to, I can put games on overtime bets, but that would have been a game I would have not done. Because I thought the Lakers had this hand in hand. Lakers season is now over. Um, bench LeBron. I mean, what what's the point? He's going for the scoring title now. He doesn't want to. He doesn't. It's going to cause more injury if you keep playing him. You have a tough schedule coming up. I don't know if we roster down point here, but I probably could look it up if I needed to. Um, LeBron triple double last night. Congrats to him, man. Twenty some points, and I forget the rest of the stats across. But, again, the only player, I'm not going to say the only player that showed up, because Russell Westbrook showed up. Heard that that's one of his best games of the season so far this morning. Um, But that wasn't the point of the conversation. Because I did put LeBron's big game. I thought that was going to mean points. That actually meant triple-double. I don't know. Maybe if LeBron put up more points, maybe they would have won. I don't know. But what else did I put here? And as I said, Mello shows up. Mello. 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 Mello did not have a good game. Sorry. I, I, I Mello goes into retirement at the end of the season? I don't know. Mello goes with Russell Westbrook somewhere at the end of the season? Don't know. <laughs> but 
This is who I gave the big F you to yesterday. Goodbye, Frank Vogel. Frankie V, not Frankie Valley, Frankie Vogel. Please get him out. I, 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 what was the excuse yesterday to losing to the Rockets in overtime? You had Russell Westbrook had one of his best games. You had LeBron James who had a triple double. Carmelo didn't show up, so I don't know what you want to do about Carmelo. You had a few other players stick up. Finally, what do you do here? Uh, who do you blame? You can't blame Russell Westbrook on this. You blame Frankie Vogel. And yeah, I might call him Frankie Vogel because he's going to be screaming when he gets kicked out the front door. You want to kick out Rob Polinka while you're at it? There you go. If you want to clean house, if you're the Buzz family and you want to clean house, Frankie Vogel goes out. Um, Rob Polinka goes out. You have Russell Westbrook goes out. Carmelo Anthony goes out. There you go. Four guys, you sweep away. You'll have a better season next season. But goodbye, Lakers. You're out of the playoffs. Plans. Play in. Sorry. Plans. They're out of the plans. Out. Don't come at me if they win a big game in the next one. Don't come at me if they're going to win one game in the next five weeks. I don't even know how many weeks there are left, but Jesus Christ. See, it later's got me all flustered over here. You can't put the blame on anybody else. Other than Frank Vogel. Raptors win against the Spurs. Uh, did I have that one? I did have that one. Well, who did I have? I had Scotty Barnes of the Raptors have it now. And I it is actually Pascal Siakam and Scotty Barnes having eight rebounds, 20 points. Would have preferred a little bit more rebounds out of them. Um, but that's all right. They did win the game 119 to 104. Spurs, who did beat the uh, LeBronless Lakers the other day, their most disappointing player was was Devin Vassell. I've heard of him once or twice in the past. Uh, 28 minutes, two rebounds, one assist, and eight points. Okay, 28 minutes, and that's all I, you could scavenger up, eh? Uh, Jacob Potel and DeJounte Murray had double doubles in the game. So congrats to them. Much as I gotcha, but I mean, I was, yeah, I was expecting Raptors to win this. So I whiffed on the Magic Pelicans. I whiffed on the Rockets Lakers. And I whiffed on the Knicks Mavs. What the hell is going on with the Mavs? Luca, I put on here yesterday, I said Luca has points, which he got. He had 34 points. And I said double double, and I said slash MVP race, right? Sure, if he's going for that, let's talk Knicks first. Julius Randle, eight rebounds, five assists, twenty six points. Want more rebounds out of Julius Randle? Um, Julius Randle is a star in my opinion. <laughs> I don't know why the Lakers ever released him, but that's or traded him, I should say. Um. Julius Randle definitely has star power in him. Hopefully we will see that. We have been seeing it, but he plays for the Knicks. So I'm sorry, but <laughs> unless the Knicks plan on getting better anytime soon and playing Kemba Walker, then it is what it is. But, you know, Mitchell Robinson, Alec Burks both had double doubles. Mitchell Robinson is also going to be another star, up and coming star. If he isn't already, he does need to put out more rebounds this season. He needs to put up more points like he's capable of. I think he's a DeAndre Ayton almost. I think he has that much potential in him. Mavs. I put the whole team, dude. Besides Luka, 31 points. Had a double-double. Uh, or no, he had no double-double. He only had 31 points. I don't know if he even came close to a double-double. He, but he put up the points. I, I did say points, so... Got that one. I put the whole team, let the Mavs down, but... I, Individually, I want to put Finney Smith and Powell and Reggie Bullock in there. Dwight Powell. If you go back and look at their stats, they're sad. Um, the whole team was sad. Did they play the other night? I don't think they did, right? Yeah, they had an off night So the other night. So I don't know why they exactly lost that. Knicks played, right? No, I didn't even have a Knicks on. Who knows? 107 to 77. Let's put that to next to the Jazz and Blazers game here and the uh, T-Wolves and Thunder, Timberwolves and Thunder. How does that make you feel there, Mavs? 
Don't let it happen again. <laughs> I don't even know what you say after that. Luka definitely drops in the MVP race. Sorry. I think DeMar takes the spot. DeMar DeRozan takes Luka's spot. <laughs> Clippers win against the Wizards. Let's see. I did not have that, and I knew I should have. I put Wizards, Porzingis, Kuzma. Um, who showed up last night? We have Marcus Morris Sr. showing up with eight rebounds, 27 points. Reggie Jackson showed up. Why would he ever show up against them? No clue. Seven assists, 31 points. Maybe he heard the podcast yesterday. Maybe he was the second person in here. Nick Batum, you played 33 minutes. You only have five rebounds, three assists, and eight points. What do you do? You've had the same problem in Charlotte before. You're going to have the same problem now. And I know there's two Batum brothers. Don't get me wrong. I know. I know. Wizards, what are you doing? And uh, this isn't even going to be directed at anybody besides one person here. Krista Persingis. You played 26 minutes. You had three assists and you had 19 points. Let's have a party. You had one rebound and you are the starting center of the Wizards. You are the starting center of the Wizards. What does that tell me right there? Yo. One rebound? What are you talking about? In 26 minutes, that's all you could grab in your 6 foot 11 or I, I, don't, I don't get it. You are a star for the Wizards. You are a star in New York. You are a star in Dallas. You're supposed to be a star now. 19 points isn't going to cut it. I need rebounds. You the Ben Simmons of the league? Are you a shooting guard now? Like what? Or a point guard now? What are you doing? Uh, I know Daniel Gafford. I've talked to him once in my life. Pretty cool dude. He did take the star game for the Wizards yesterday. 22 minutes, 10 rebounds, 14 points. Let's compare real quick. 26 minutes. Hmm. Did Kristaps Porzingis play that much? He did. Daniel Gafford, 22 minutes. Porzingis, one rebound. Gafford. 10. Persingas, 19 points. Gafford, 14. Could Persingas cut that down and pick up a few more rebounds? Of course he could. Of course he could. I I understand. I, I, I don't understand, Jet. I don't consider Daniel Gafford to be a starting uh, center in this league yet. Maybe on a few other teams. Um, With Kristaps Persingas there, no, I don't, but one rebound? That is one of the saddest stats. Other than Tony Snell, you're following up with a close second third. Now, on to the NBA today. We have the Nets versus the 76. 76ers, sorry. 76s. Who's my choice? My personal, my personal choice is the Brooklyn Nets. KD, yesterday, Posted that he has power over parlays. He has enough power in the NBA that he can choose when he wants to play good and when he wants to play bad. Sorry about that. I just threw my notes right in front of the camera. You know what? Then follow your uh, follow your Twitter up here, dude. You lose this game, you only score 14 points and play 40 minutes again and get seven rebounds. Good luck. <laughs> Come on, KD. I hate you. I follow that performance up. You played, let's see who you played real quick. You played the Hornets. You had that much power, right? 40 minutes, three rebounds, seven assists, 14 points. There you go. Bruce Brown matches stats from the Nets and Hornets game. Let's look at that again. I have Nets 76ers. Do you want to say you have power? Prove to me the power tonight. I'm a KD fan. I think he's one of the best of the league right now. Um, had he not got injured, maybe we'd be talking about MVP. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with that. Let's talk about how the 76ers win this. And if I were you, I would personally choose the 76ers. But KD said he has power, so I'm going with him. But if I were you, I would choose the 76ers, and here's why. Harden blows out the Nets. I think it happens. I think it needs to happen. Um, if Harden really wants to act like he's all mad and stuff, do something, please. I don't know if they have Kyrie tonight. Um, 
They don't have Simmons. Simmons is going to be on the sidelines, but he's not going to be playing. Um, Embiid has a great night, and I hope he does. Uh, he's going for the MVP. He needs to be right behind Jokic there, and Jokic is showing up, showing out. So Embiid has um, is Embiid is chasing Jokic, or they're fighting each other, and uh, Harden blows out Nets. Because KD has nothing to prove to the Nets or the Seventy Sixers. He doesn't. Uh, they might be fighting for a playoff. And this is what's going to come into the game next that we're going to talk about. Um, they're not going to be fighting as playoff position as much. But. And here's going to be to end the segment today. Warriors versus the Nuggets. I have the Nuggets winning. Yes, I'll say that again. I have the Nuggets winning. Believe it or not, I, I I know, right? And you go, well, you don't have the Warriors? No, I don't have the Warriors. Let's see. Will Ferrell played with them the other night, and they won. I don't know if Will Ferrell's going to be back out there tonight or not. Um, Clay, Steph, pick it up. One of you needs to pick up the ball and start shooting. Steph, I don't know what happened to you. You completely fell off the cliff here with your threes. You hit a record, and then you stopped. Clay, you haven't been right since you've been back. We're waiting for it. Everybody's waiting for it. Pick up the ball. Put it in. I think you had a 26-point game a few weeks ago. That was a few weeks ago. But I don't have the Warriors winning. And this is going to be down to soul. This isn't because I have a grudge about somebody's Twitter. The Katie's. I have Nuggets legitimately winning this game. You have Jokic going for MVP. And that was the same reason I had him last night. Um, Jokic and Embiid know they're both playing tonight and know that this is going to be a potential uh, this could be a potential game changer so they're both going to be playing hard um, Embiid I, or unfortunately Jokic is going to be the uh, probably the successor out of this because but the Warriors have nobody to guard a 7 foot monster so I mean KD can overpower Embiid but you know but this is another big game with the Wizards and Nuggets. I would choose the Nuggets also. But Nuggets are below the Warriors in playoff position, and I believe that they want to fight to have better playoff position as well. Right? Right. So, yeah. Choices for today. Choose the 76ers. <laughs> Yeah, choose the 76ers. I circled Nets. You guys choose the 76ers. You'll most likely win. Um, choose the Nuggets. You'll probably win, most likely. I don't know. The only way the Warriors win is if Clay and Steph score 30 apiece or close to 30 apiece. And I'll even write that down real quick. Well, I will when I, we get done with this. I'll write it down that I remember that, and I'll say something about that tomorrow. Um. Yeah, the only way Clay and Steph win thirty apiece, which is completely doable, they can shoot from the three point line. So, but yeah, thank you guys for being here, second day in a row. Hopefully, this stream saves. Uh, thank you S N J for the follow, as well. Make sure you check out the YouTube content. Um. Yeah. Until then, have a good one.